Deploy a Django app with G-Unicorn and Nginx. Taking a Django app from development to production is a demanding but rewarding process. This course will take you through that process step by step, providing an in-depth guide that starts at square one with a no-frills Django application and adds in G-Unicorn, Nginx and domain registration. At the end, you'll be better equipped to take your Django app into production and serve it to the world. In this course, you'll learn how you can take your Django app from development to production, how you can host your app on a real-world public domain, and how to introduce G-Unicorn and Nginx into the request and response chain. To make the most out of this course, you should have an introductory level understanding of Python and Django. If you need help in either area, RealPython has got you covered, with this learning path covering an introduction to Python and these tutorials covering Django. This course was created using Django 4.1.1, although the techniques covered should be very similar for any recent version of the web framework. The course involves setting up a cloud virtual machine on a server run by a third party, so it should be considered as touching on DevOps. Due to the fast-moving nature of cloud hosting, you may need to spend time with your chosen cloud host's documentation to get the services you need up and running. And we would consider this course to be of an intermediate to advanced level because of this. However, it's well worth persevering with as knowledge of how to host a Django project online is a useful skill to have. Also note that the course does not cover setup methods that will persist across reboots of the cloud server that you choose. If the server is rebooted, then some of the steps, such as setting environment variables, will need to be repeated to get the site back online. So now you know what you need and what you'll be covering in this course, let's get started. Cloud Environment and Django Setup in this course, you'll use Django as the framework at the core of your web app, using it for URL routing, HTML rendering, authentication, administration, and backend logic. Later on, you'll supplement the Django component with two other layers, G-Unicorn and Nginx, in order to serve the application scalably. But before all of that, you'll need to set up your environment and get the Django application itself up and running. First, you'll need to launch and set up a virtual machine, or VM, on which the web application will run. You should familiarize yourself with at least one infrastructure as a service cloud service provider to provision a VM. This section will walk you through the process at a high level, but won't cover every step in detail. Using a VM to serve a web app is an example of IaaS, where you have full control over the server software. Other options beside this do exist such as a serverless architecture which allows you to compose the Django app only and let a separate framework or cloud provider handle the infrastructure side, or a containerized approach which allows multiple apps to run independently on the same host operating system. For this course though, you'll use the tried and true route of serving Nginx and Django directly on IaaS. Two popular options for virtual machines are Azure VMs and Amazon EC2. To get more help with launching the instance, you should refer to the documentation for your cloud provider. For Azure VMs, follow their quick start guide for creating a Linux virtual machine in the Azure portal. For Amazon EC2, learn how to get set up. The Django project and everything else involved in this course sit on a T2 micro Amazon EC2 instance running Ubuntu Server 22.04. Regardless of platform, one important component of VM setup is inbound security rules. These are fine-grained rules that control the inbound traffic to your instance. Create the inbound rules seen on screen for initial development, which you'll modify in production. The first rule allows TCP over port 8000 from your personal computer's IPv4 address, allowing you to send requests to your Django app when you serve it in development on port 8000. The second rule allows inbound traffic from network interfaces and instances that are assigned to the same security group using the security group ID as the source. This is a rule included in the default AWS security group that you should tie to your instance. 
The third rule allows you to access your VM via SSH from your personal computer. You'll also want to add an outbound rule to allow outbound traffic to do things such as install packages. From your local computer, you will then be able to SSH into the instance. This command logs you into your VM as the user Ubuntu. Here, the first part of the command is the path to the private key. This is part of the security credentials that you tied to the VM. This provides a much more secure method of access than using a username and password. With this part of the setup complete, in the next section of the course, you'll take a look at creating a basic Django app and some setup techniques that are useful when running a site on a cloud server. Creating a cookie cutter Django app. You're not concerned with making a fancy Django project with complex URL routing or advanced database features for this course. Instead, you want something that's plain, small and understandable, allowing you to test quickly whether your infrastructure is working. To that end, you can take the following steps to set up your app. First, SSH into your VM and make sure that you have the latest versions of Python and SQLite 3 installed. In the case of this VM, Python 3.10 is the system Python and the Python version that ships with Ubuntu 22.04. Upgrading the distribution ensures you receive bug and security fixes from the latest Python release. Optionally, you could install another Python version entirely, such as Python 3.11, alongside the system-wide interpreter, which you'd need to invoke specifically as Python 3.11. Next, create and activate a virtual environment. Now, install Django 4.1. At this point, for the purposes of on-screen clarity, the terminal prompt will be set to be shorter than the default as much of each line is being taken up by the prompt. You may well not need to do this, but the code to do so is included in the course files. You can now bootstrap the Django project and app using Django's management commands as seen on screen. This creates the Django app, my app, alongside the project named project. You can see the structure of files created on screen. As you're accessing the machine via SSH, you'll be using a terminal editor such as Vim or GNU Nano. On screen, you'll see Nano being used as it's installed by default in many Linux distributions and is straightforward to learn. Open project settings.py and append your app to installed apps as seen on screen. To save a file in Nano, press Ctrl and O for output and hit Enter. You can then exit by pressing Ctrl and X. Next, open My App, 
template, my app, home.html, and create a short and sweet HTML page. After that, edit myappviews.py to render that HTML page. Now create and open myappurls.py to associate your new view with a URL pattern. And now edit project urls.py to include the URLs you've just added. You can do one more thing while you're at it, which is to make sure the Django secret key used for cryptographic signing isn't hard-coded in settings.py, which Git will likely track. Open up project settings.py in Nano. Import the OS module as you will be needing it. And then remove the hard-coded secret key. You can do this by pressing Ctrl K at the beginning of the line. Then enter the code seen on screen to read the secret key from the environment and raise an error if it's not found. This tells Django to look in your environment for secret key rather than including it in your application source code. For larger projects, check out Django Environ to configure your Django application with environment variables. Finally, you'll need to set the key in your environment. Here's how you can do that on Ubuntu Linux using OpenSSL to set the key to an 80 character string. You can cap the contents of Django's secret key to see that OpenSSL has generated a cryptographically secure hex string key. Also, you can print out the value of the environment variable to check that the script has correctly stored the value. With all that in place, you're ready to go. Your minimal app is complete and set up. In the next section of the course, you'll see how to get the site up and running with Django's development server. Using Django's WSGI server in development. In this section, you'll test Django's development server using HTTPy, a command line HTTP client for testing requests to your web app from the console. First, use CD to change back to the home directory then PWD to check the absolute location of it. Check that you're using the correct virtual environment and install HTTPy. You can create an alias that will let you send a GET request using HTTPy to your application. This alias is get to an HTTP call with some default flags. You can now use get 
docs.python.org to see the response headers and body from the Python documentation's homepage. Before starting the Django development server, you can check your Django project for potential problems. If your check doesn't identify any issues, then tell Django's built-in application server to start listening on localhost using the default port of 8000. Using nohup, an ampersand executes the command in the background so that you can continue to use your shell. Nohup will redirect standard output and standard error to the file nohup.out. If it appears that nohup hangs and leaves you without a cursor, press enter to get your terminal cursor and shell prompt back. You can use the jobs command to see the process identifier which will let you bring the process to the foreground or terminate it. Django's run server command uses the syntax seen on screen. If you leave the address port argument unspecified as seen previously, Django will default to listening on localhost port 8000. You can use the lsof command to verify more directly that a Python command was invoked to listen on port 8000. At this point in the course, your app is only listening on localhost, which is the address 127.0.0.1. It's not yet accessible from a browser, but you can still give it its first visitor by sending a GET request from the command line within the VM itself. The header section seen on screen describes the software that generated the response. In this case, it's version 0.2 of Whiskey Server alongside CPython 3.10. Whiskey Server is nothing more than a Python class defined by Django that implements the Python Whiskey protocol. What this means is that it adheres to the Web Server Gateway Interface, which is a standard that defines a way for web server software and web applications to interact. In our example so far, the Django GUnicorn Nginx project is the web application. Since you're serving the app in development, there's actually no separate web server. Django uses the simple server module, which implements a lightweight HTTP server and fuses the concept of web server versus application server into one command, run server. In the next section of the course, you'll see how to get your site online for the world to see.